Donkey Kong 64 has a lot of glitches. It's practically a defining part of the game. A lot of glitches are abused to reach areas and collect things earlier than intended. But what if you couldn't do that? What if all the glitches in DK64 were gone? You would have to play the game glitchless. Well, with the game as it is, that would be a tall task. But we can certainly try to cut some stuff out. So today, we're going to be taking to Notepad++, writing out some newer scripts, and obliterating 8 glitches from Donkey Kong 64. Let's see how we do it. Swim through vertical walls, phase walking, and phase falling all happen on the US release of Donkey Kong 64 when you exit first person with an initial angle less than 180 degrees. The angle of a Kong is represented by a 16-bit unsigned integer, taking values anywhere between 0 and 65,535. The normal range of an angle is between 0 and 4,095. 0 being 0 degrees, and 4095 being as close to 360 degrees as possible. What the game is meant to do is subtract 4096 from any angle that exceeds 4095. However, this correction is only done upon changing angles amongst a couple other conditions. So, if the player's angle is between 0 and 2047, the new angle after exiting first person exceeds 4095 and if they prevent the correction being performed, they are able to maintain that angle overflow. So how do we fix this? Quite simple, constantly perform the modulo function on a Kong angle so that it's always within the 0 to 4095 range. Glitch patched. When there is a large amount of lag, you have the ability to clip through walls. This is because the game speeds up your Kong to compensate for the frame rate drop. Since the game only calculates collision detection on the visual frames, you can bypass collision detection by causing a sufficient amount of lag. So, there are two potential ways to fix this glitch. One, ensure that the game does not boost the Kong when lag is present, or two, ensure that the game checks collision detection upon every frame, not just the visual frames. Unfortunately, there is no known way to check collision detection every frame, However, we can ensure that no boost occurs when lag is present. How? There are two 32-bit integers stored in memory, representing the total amount of frames and the last visual frame that occurred. If we constantly set that last visual frame to the total amount of frames, then the game will have zero lag. It will be as if the game had a visual frame every frame. However, this isn't entirely accurate. In fact, DK64 actually lags normally to an extent where, in lagless play, there is one visual frame for every one lag frame. So, we would in fact set the last visual frame to the total amount of frames minus one to account for this. Glitch patched. Under various conditions, depending on your camera angle, the key in the hideout helm may not save. Also, you can go out of bounds to get key 8 without opening crown door, the cave rule door, or the company coin door. Ideally, we want to fix fake key so it doesn't ever happen. However, we can make it happen under certain conditions, like those trying to be dirty glitch abusers and trying to skip those three doors. We have to get pretty clever in order to fix this bug. Key 8 belongs to a certain list of objects known as Object Model 2. When you do not have Key 8, the key will be on the map, and therefore will be on the list. But when you pick it up, or have the key already, the key will disappear from the map, and as a result, will also disappear from the list. So we can check whether Key 8 is part of the list when in Hideout Helm, and then either set or clear the flag, depending on whether the three doors are open. Glitches patched. Let's take a look at a golden banana in the game. There are a large variety of ones we can choose from, but let's just pick the arcade round one golden banana. Upon completing the first round of arcade, the golden banana becomes collectible. There is, in fact, a check which happens with the game. Upon loading the map from fresh, the golden banana is collectible. 
As soon as you load the arcade area, the game checks whether the first round of arcade is done, and then one frame later, if it's not complete, the banana becomes uncollectible until you complete the round. The same applies for other hideout helm medals. The game starts out with them being collectible, until you load certain sections of the blastomatic room, at which point it performs the check. If the barrels assigned to the medal are incomplete, then the medal becomes uncollectible. This works fine unless you turn off the blastomatic and reload helm without collecting the medals on the US version. In a situation where the blastomatic is off, the game still counts the medals as uncollectible essentially locking you out of ever getting 101%. So how do we fix this? Like with patching the skipped gear key early, we can check the state of the blastomatic flag. If the blastomatic has been shut down, then we can write the collection state of all banana medals in Helm to make them collectible. And now they're collectible even though the blastomatic is off. Glitch patched. Begin. What is a moon kick? Well, in the words of the former 101 world record holder, C Fox, My theory on how the moon kick works is uh, by jumping and then doing his uh, like air B move and then kicking, you kick into the ground, like you said. And I think because you're like underneath the ground, it tries to like reverse gravity. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so it acts like you're falling, point. but up. That's a very Nobody good explanation, it. whether it's true yeah. or not. I, I think we no should idea. accept it. I we're gonna put on the site. I like that reverse <laughs> gravity is the most logical thing that you can think of. Whilst funny, in the six years that have passed since this episode of the Sunday Sequence Break, we have gained a more in-depth understanding of this incredibly broken mechanic. Moon kicks are, in technical terms, the initial Y velocity of a kick with the Y acceleration on an aerial attack. So how can a moon kick be turned into a regular kick? Quite simple. The difference between a moon kick and a kick is simply the factor of the Y acceleration. So if we detect that the Kong is in a kicking animation, which can either be from a moon kick or a regular kick, we force the Y acceleration to be minus 20 instead of minus 2.5. Glitch patched. Tack Barrel Storage is one of the more recent discoveries on this list. But that doesn't mean that it's not as understood. The act of tag barrel storage is gaining control of the Kong whilst in the tag barrel. Upon doing that, you can do many things afterwards. So the act of prevention of tag barrel storage has to be the prevention of gaining control. Whilst this may seem hard to pull off, it's a lot easier than you might think. To detect whether we've entered a tag barrel, we're going to use the cutscene library. Upon entering a tag barrel, you get a small cutscene what purpose this cutscene is meant to serve is completely unknown. However, it's still there. So we can detect whether this particular cutscene is active. Great! Now we know when we've entered tag barrels, how do we now prevent control being gained? Under normal circumstances, being in a tag barrel means you're in the barrel movement state, whereas under tag barrel storage, you're not. So if we detect a non-barrel animation during the cutscene, we can alter your movement state to barrel. This locks Kong movement and means you can't gain control in the tag barrel. Glitch patched. There are 8 keys in Donkey Kong 64. Six of them serve a purpose for opening the levels leading up to and including Hideout Helm, where the 8th key is located. Since this is the case, the game developers made the assumption that if you had key 8, you have to have those 6 keys these six being keys 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So when checking whether to spawn the final battle, the developers wanted to ensure you had all eight keys. Since the aforementioned assumption can be made, you can also make the similar assumption that if you have keys 3 and 8, you also have all keys in the game. Using this, the game checks whether you have keys 3 and 8. If you fulfil those two conditions, it spawns the final boss. With glitches, you can enter Hideout Helm without any keys, so beating the game with just keys 3 and 8 is very possible. But we're trying to ruin everyone's fun here, so let's just stop that being a thing. First of all, we perform a flag check for all of the 8 keys. If we have all 8 turned in, then we know we are fulfilling the conditions that we are wanting. So how do we prevent entry? Simple. If our conditions aren't met, we simply warp you out of the K-Rule boss fight, and since you try to be a dirty glitch abuser, 
will punish you by being in a test map. But that's not all. I know what you're thinking. You're just going to go to the levels out of order so you can be faster. Tough luck, we're trying to ruin some fun here. If you try to enter any level lobby without turning in the appropriate key, which can be performed with more flag checks, we'll just warp you out of the lobby and put you in Kong Prison for eternity. Glitch patched. So there are some classic Donkey Kong 64 glitches patched with the power of Lua scripting. I hope you've enjoyed me practically destroying the rainforest that is Donkey Kong 64 glitches. If you want to try out these modifications, I'll be linking my Lua script in the description below for you to have a play around with. It only works on Bizhawk and with the US version of Donkey Kong 64, but that's not too much of a restriction. Anyway, that's it for today, I will see you in the next video, wherever and whenever that might be.